Teresa, do you remember how we started and where we started and when we started the Asia and Short Tech podcast? But it's quite a while ago. Um, I think we first met in March 2019, where you know we uh, came like up with the idea. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I think the initial idea was that I come onto the podcast and then I said like, hey, why don't we create a different show? Because you were running the um, Asia Tech Asia podcast? Tech Podcast. Yeah. Yes. 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 And I remember you said that to me and I remember thinking, okay, I'll do that. I have no idea what this is going to mean or what it's going <laughs> to what it's going to turn into. But do you also remember the time frame that you gave us? Oh yeah, you know, um I think I think we said we launched in first of May and that was like mid March. So I just remember that's this part what of the it's like working with a German. <laughs> yes, and I love it. Every part of working with a German I love. If I remember correctly, you said to me, What does it take to launch? And then actually you just answered your question for me and you said, Look, I'm not launching with less than five episodes and we're launching on May first. And I remember just saying, yes, but walking out of that room thinking, can we really do this? But the one thing that I love about working with you, I mean, there's so many of them, right? But one of them is just like this discipline to get stuff done. And that's helped, right? As the, as the show has grown as well. You know, at the beginning, we, had, we didn't really have that many listeners. And now we have listeners in over 170 countries. And I think that kind of growth in just the four years that we've been doing this has been kind of amazing. Do you want to talk at all about what's growing around the Asian Short Tech podcast as well, particularly now that you're based in New York? Um, yeah, sure. So, you know, we have with the Asian Short Tech podcast produced close to 300 episodes by now, I think, and um, yeah. actually are one of the largest podcasts, not only in Asia, but globally. And I think that's amazing, right? Like something that started here in Thailand. Um, in Bangkok in, in 2019 has now grown into you know a global insurtech podcast. And um, in order to preserve the you know Asia insurtech podcast, the brand and the focus on the Asian market, which I still think right. it's it's really important. And um, yes. you know, it is a platform to tell Asia success stories to a global audience. But we have right. now also started with the new show called InsureTech Amplified, um, with me now being based in New York and um, looking at the global InsureTech and insurance innovation space. So um, yeah, it's never never getting boring here. <laughs> it's not at all. I also feel like, first of all, I've grown so much in the time that we've done this. And I've also learned a lot about the insurance industry. And one of the key things that has changed, I think, and part of the impact that telling these stories has had is that when we first started recording, a lot of people would say to us, insurance is not a sexy business and it's not a sexy topic. And now people just are coming out of the woodwork to want to not just talk about it, but be involved in it. All the platform companies, all of the payment companies, the insurers now work with the insure tax. Nobody talks about disruption. They just talk about enablement. How has it changed in your mind from when we first started? Yeah, it has, it has definitely changed quite a lot, right? So in in 2019 when we started with the Asia InsureTech podcast it was there was this like fear in the industry that the InsureTechs are coming in and you know right. that there's a major disruption i don't think we have seen that um but what we have definitely seen is a lot of inspiration and a lot of you know changes for the better of the whole industry not only the InsureTechs exactly. but insurance yeah. incumbents realizing they can work with these new players they can you know deploy technology in completely new ways and i think the industry as a whole has gotten better be before it right so i um, think so too look i find it really exciting i love having these conversations with people i feel like i get this extra benefit of being able to meet the incumbent insurers being able to meet the founders of the insure tech companies being able to meet the venture capitalists that invest in these companies i don't know from my position i feel like it's super super lucky and look you're going to be at insure tech connect in las vegas just the stuff we get to do i think is amazing and it's all an outgrowth of that conversation that we had for starting the Asian insure tech podcast <laughs> sometimes i find it just truly amazing yeah yeah, no, no, absolutely. And um, yeah, also if we look at how the 
companies we had on the show have also like grown and developed over time, right? You sure. mentioned the first five episodes and one of these five episodes was with um, uh, Tanasak from Fair D. So he oh, has right. founded Fair D in Thailand and later it was acquired by Koala, it was, you know, based in, um, in Indonesia. So That's I right. think, you know, it's great to see these involvements and, you know, how actually a lot of Thai insurtechs have um, been acquired, have, you know, joined international teams. The other example is uh, Frank um, started by, right. by Harpram Dua, right, which has right. been acquired by Boltec. And, um, yeah, it's great to see these developments, how, you know, all these companies have evolved and how the industry has evolved over the past four years. I, I could not agree with you more. And in a way, I sort of feel like we've been a part of it. And I feel like we've grown as well. Do you remember when we did the recording at that hotel? Was it on Scumbit Road? And we had one small microphone that we passed around the table. <laughs> Do you remember that? Yes. And we actually turned that into like a proper episode. And now look at you, a fancy MV7 in front of you. We sound great. It's just, I feel like we've grown along with all the stuff that we've been doing. And I feel like that's super cool. Yeah. One last thing. Where do we go from here? Well, I mean, we we do continue with the Asia InsureTech podcast. As mentioned, sure. I, you know, still strong believer we should have a dedicated platform for all the amazing things that are happening in Asia. Um, we are also running, as mentioned, the um, InsureTech Amplified um, podcast. And, yeah, we are also working with a lot of different um, insurers, uh, conference organizers and helping them with their, like, media and content strategy. Right. Exciting times ahead. Absolutely. Absolutely.